up to this awesome broadcast that is about to connect you to divinity and transform your life totally forever. And the thing is, you must remember, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, that the necessary information you need to remember will not be forgotten. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare in the name of the Lord that this teaching will do you good and establish significant kingdom information that you will never forget. In Jesus' mighty name. But I declare that the sinners shall be saved as they listen to this broadcast, that the backsliders will be recovered back, and those who have needs and challenges in their life, that they will have their miracles. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the depressed will be revived again. Let yokes be broken, let the sick be healed. Thank you, precious Father. Bless businesses, bless those who are in one investment or the other. Let us be of under investment for profits. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, quickly, the theme of this series is you must remember. You must remember. We began many weeks ago. And of course, we took it from the first one, which uh, we said, What you must remember. That's to do with you must remember the fatherhood of God. You must remember that God is your father. Although God is God to everybody. But as an individual who gave his life to Christ, you became a child of God, which means God is your daddy. Remembering that is enough to transform your situation. It's enough to remove your sorrow and your depression. It's enough. You know, the prodigal son had this problem. He just wanted it. He was in problem. He lost everything before I gave him. As if forgetting that he had a father. But when he remembered his father, he, 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 he calculated the status of the father. That the father has more than enough. And he's suffering and not pushing in the street now. He said, My God, I'm going back to my father. I'm going back to my father. I'm going back to my father. When you remember the fatherhood of God, that this God who calls himself your father, whom you have accepted as father, is the owner of silver and gold. And I too. This God who calls himself your father is the healer of all sicknesses and diseases. This God who calls himself father that you have accepted as your daddy is the God of provision, is the God of protection, is the God of revelation, is the director of the whole world. You've got to know this that God is your father. The second thing we explain is the love of God. You must remember the love of God. The Bible said that God. So love the world that you gave. You must remember, therefore, that God is a giver. That when you know Him, that His law does not fail. The scripture says the love of God is forever and ever. Don't forget the love of God. He said, if God can give us His own Son, what will He not give to us? That the fact of love. Remember the love of God. Don't forget, it's a loving God. It's a loving God. You must remember the love of God. The third thing we explained in previous teaching is the certainty of judgment. You must know that for every evil you do here on earth, there are judgment coming. Consequences. You must remember the certainty of consequences. That it doesn't matter how long it takes. When you do an evil to somebody, it's coming back to do for you. When you plot against somebody, somebody will plot against you. When you speak against somebody, somebody, God will raise up somebody that will speak against you. In that to say, whatever you want, so is what it is. That said, you must remember that this thing you are doing now <laughs> against somebody, go and mark it. You sow the seed that will grow. It will be done against you. Now, I, I also preach the third thing, the fourth thing you must remember is the past goodness of God. You must remember the past goodness of God. You must know that God has done. See, see when we are faced with challenge. The first thing is that we forget that God was good before. They never make us not to remember. We begin to ponder on the challenge before us as if God is not able to do it. We begin to ponder on the problem, looking at the problem as if it's an impossibility. But we don't remember that God did something like this before. You must remember the past goodness of God. That's how David conquered Goliath. When Goliath was dead, bouncing upon that, he said, King Saul, I think I can kill him. Why? Because I remember the goodness of God. That God was good to me in previous challenges. God was good to me when a lion came. The Lord delivered the lion into my hand. He 
the beer came, God also delivered the beer. I killed them with my hand. This Goliath will be one of them. He remembered how good God has been. And the power came to defeat this Goliath. When you remember the past goodness of God, you are motivated to do. You are motivated to believe God for a new one. You must remember the past goodness of God. Are you experiencing the lack? Remember, God was good before. He provided before. The lack you have now is not the new thing. He did provide for you before. Always remember the past goodness of God. Always remember. Now, we exhaustively preached all this in our past edition, which you can go back and, and listen to them. The fifth one is you must remember the covenant of law in the brotherhood. You must remember that once you are a Christian, once you are a child of God, you are a, a member of a family called the Christ family, Christians. And you have no justification to fight against yourself. When you are born again, you have no justification to do any evil against anyone who is also a child of God. It's a family that you must respect the integrity of that union. You don't do any evil against each other. He says, speak not evil against one another. You must live in that brotherhood. Only what is good will discuss with you. Only what is good will speak about. Don't speak evil against another Christian. You must remember you have the same blood covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me read another one scripture for you. In the book of Psalm 130, so you can see the power of brotherhood. See what he says. Psalm 133 from verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, Behold, how good and how pleasant, how it, good is and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together uh -huh. in unity. When you dwell in the unity of the power that you do good to a Christian, you don't speak evil against one, don't condemn each other. You don't plan evil against another. You don't try a Christian to court. You settle within yourself. When you begin to do this, Look at the benefit of living in the brotherhood, knowing that this guy is in the family of Christ, into which you have been born. It is like the precious ointment. Now, hear what he says. When you live in this mentality of brotherhood, recognizing the unity into which you have not been born again to enter, when you see every Christian as the same blood with you, it doesn't even matter the denomination, the same God. The difference in church symbol, the difference in the name of your church, once you are born again, it doesn't matter the church you attend, we belong to the same brotherhood. And when you have that mindset, when you live in that understanding, when you practice that understanding of brotherhood, see what I'm saying. It is like the precious ointment. It is like anointing. You cannot be anointed when you don't dwell in this brotherhood. Many pray, 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 fast, fast, fast. They can't be anointed. They don't have the power. Because anointing only flows. Only for those who respect the love of the brother. Who know Christianity is a big family with different towns and different nations and different families. But all of us have come together under the umbrella of Jesus Christ. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, anyone who has done so is your brother. Don't treat them like strangers because we lose the blessing. He said, when you live in that understanding that that brother in that church is my family member, that Christian in the other church is my family member, then you are coming to this alignment. Anointing will begin to flow through you. He said, that is where anointing flows. Recognizing the brotherhood of Christianity. Go ahead. It is like the precious ointment upon the head uh -huh. that ran down upon the bed. Uh -huh. Even Aaron's bed. Uh -huh. That went down to the skirt of his garment. Uh -huh. As the dew of Hermon. It is like the dew of Hermon. When you live in this brotherhood, this mentality that we are on the same family, we may be in different denominations, but once we recognize Jesus as our Lord and Savior, no matter the difference in our symbol and who pastors us, that we are in the same family, when you come to that understanding and then you begin to practice it, uh, he said, number two, the second thing that will happen to you is that. You will operate sweatlessly. Oh. <laughs> Effortlessly. He, he figuratively explained it as the dew of hammer. Dew. There is no, no storm, no cloud. Rain will 
before. <laughs> That's not Jew. The Jew, the Jew of Hammer is that place in that place, that geography. The Jew that falls there comes with such a magnitude that people think I really fair. It will be fluid on the ground. That's what God is saying. When you live in the mentality of the brotherhood, that we are all brothers and sisters under the same family of Christ, that we don't do evil against each other, we don't speak, we don't gossip, we don't backbite that, that, that brother, that sister, you stay in law. Only what is loving you do to that brother, that sister. When you operate in this dimension, the Bible said, your result will be sweatless. Your evidence will be sweatless. People will see you succeeding and they don't know how you succeeded. Like the Jew of Hammer, flowing blessings, flowing miracles. Even this is the real hindrance where many people in the church they pray, 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 pray. Fast, 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 fast. Yes, no miracle. Why? Because they don't obey the law of the ground. They are fighting each other in the church, they are quarreling with each other. People of the same family. You have broken the covenant of brother. You will suffer one. You cannot operate under anointing. Two, you will struggle before you see rain. You will sweat before you see your next progress. You will lay up before you see evidence in your life. Why? Because you have broken the covenant of brother. Go ahead and take it. As the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, uh -huh. for dear, for dear, no matter uh -huh. the Lord commanded the blessing. Now that's what happened. That is where God command until you live in the unity of brotherhood, knowing that that church there and a church where you say family is a house with different rooms. <laughs> until you know this and begin to operate, knowing that you are just in one room. The other denomination is in the other room. But all of us are in the same house. Only begin to operate and treat people in that simplicity and God. Now, the Bible says, when you operate in that dimension, he said, that is where God commanded his destiny. God didn't say it. No, he commanded. No. You don't know command. It means enforcing it for implementation. You didn't only really say it, you also enforced it to happen. Command. It's different from self. And God commanded the blessing. It means he's saying that when you operate in this dimension of brotherhood, he said the blessing of God is commanded upon you. It comes. He commanded it and so it was. It means command blessing. Why are people struggling to marry? When Christ appeared in Christ, he never married for you to come. This is the problem. This is the problem. Fighting each other, gossiping each other, by fighting each other. In the same church, you are, you see, you know, you know that. If you don't live under this platform, you are cursed. Just as God commanded his blessing upon those who live with this mindset of brotherhood, the same way, what is the opposite of blessed? Cursed. When you live outside this frame of law for the brotherhood, God also commanded cost upon you. You wonder you're in the church, you look like a cost person. <laughs> you know why? You broke the covenant of the brother. We are one from the same father, better by Christ. You, you have to begin to practice how to see that Christian in that church, in that denomination, as the same brother with you. Otherwise, you are cursed. See, there are courses that are breakable. I'm coming with a new series, The Unbreakable Covenant. The Unbreakable Course. That's the topic. The Unbreakable Course. You can break the course of which? Break the course of Juma. Break the course of somebody that. But you cannot break the course that you evoke upon yourself by violating the principle of the kingdom. You cannot be unbreakable. It can only be broken by obedience, repentance, and obedience. And he said, if you don't obey this covenant, this love covenant, you don't live with other Christians as if they are the same brothers and sisters in the same family of Christ. God also commanded curse upon you. No one can curse you except God. And God is saying, I will curse you. Why? You don't have the love of 
they bring up. That evil you speak against that church, against that church, against that church, that is foundation. Whereas you are all believing in Christ Jesus. The whole accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The difference is the son of the difference is the pastor who pastors you. The new have the same father and the same Christ who died for us. Now, that's what it says. Three major things. Three major things. One, the anointing to perform. The anointing to do extra. The anointing for supernaturality. It comes only when you recognize the brotherhood in Christianity. And you, you live the life we are pledging. All through the Bible. The Bible always is what? Brethren, 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 brethren. Why? Because we are the same family. If you live outside this context of the Lord in your brotherhood, you are cursed. Number two, what from the anointing that comes? Three, sweatless progress, effortless achievements. Like the dew that falls on Mount Zion. And three, you are blessed forevermore. I dedicate you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you begin to align yourself with this love covenant of the brotherhood. That one, you may be anointed by God. Number two, that you may operate sweatlessly for success. Number three, that you may be blessed. God will command the blessing upon you. Now, these are the things we talked before in previous editions. If you have, don't have it, you can contact our media department and they will make it available to you at a very simple cost. Now, number six, what you must remember. You must remember the certainty of reward. The certainty of reward. Every good thing you do is rewarded. Every good thing you do is compensated. And we're going to do a recast of all we have done so far. By the next edition, I will start with it. With, you must remember point eight. Now, look at it. Look at, look at the scripture that I want to read. Colossians 3, verse 23 and 24. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and verse 24. Uh -huh. And whatsoever you do, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Do it from your heart. As to the Lord. As if you are doing it unto the Lord. And not unto men. And not unto men. Now, when you begin to do things as if you did it for man, you could not have a potential. High blood pressure. Because human being, that was said, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. No one can understand it. You lift a man up and the pinnacle of where you lifted him, he begins to spit on you. If that's the man you lifted up. That's, how, that's the nature of man. So if you do things because of man, you will be frustrated because their reaction to you who help them will be very terrible. So anything good you do, do it as if you did it unto the Lord. So if the person compensates you, if he doesn't, he shouldn't bother you. Your reward is coming. <laughs> Look at go ahead. Knowing that, knowing that of the Lord. Of the Lord. He shall receive the reward of inheritance. It's from God who receive the reward, not from man. Don't expect reward from any man. So you will not have appetition. They may not reward you. <laughs> Anything good you do for man, remember this that the reward of that thing you did for Mr. Peter does not come from Mr. Peter. It comes from God. Go ahead. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the inheritance of your reward. You must know and remember that the reward comes from God. For he said the Lord Christ. For you are serving the Lord Christ. Go ahead. But he that doeth wrong, he that doeth wrong, shall receive for the wrong which he has done. It's okay. You can see what I'm saying in the book of Proverbs 14, verse 23. See what he said again. We're just recap. Proverbs chapter 14 uh -huh. and verse 23. Yeah. In all labor, in all labor, there is profit. There is profit. <laughs> I don't know why I've been laboring and there is no profit. Let I speak to you from the integrity of this scripture. That from today, your labor will guarantee your profit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every devil and every demon harassing your profitability in that which you have made your heart to do. Every powers of darkness trying to intimidate your success story 
As you study and read, every demonic force trying to make you to have evidence of your studies, to make you a failure, I break the hold of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Scripture cannot be broken. John 10, 35. I declare this scripture will not be broken. Every labor, whatever you are doing to survive, you will survive. Every business you are doing will profit you. Everything you are doing will produce gain. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, your source of income will not be truncated. Your labor will be provided. We will guarantee the next provision that we lift you up. Go ahead. In all labor, in all labor, there is profit. That's what the Bible said. Get ready for profit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak profit to that man. I speak profit to that woman. I speak profit to that girl. But from today, you will not lose. Do not be a failure in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are capping and running up the seventh one, which we is called. You must remember the suddenness of the rapture. Because the rapture will happen today. You must remember the suddenness of the rapture. The rapture is a concept, frame. That reveal that the season is coming when believers will hear a trumpet sounded in the air and they will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord. No other person will hear the noise except those who are qualified in the rapture. And I said, you must remember not just remembering the rapture, but remembering that the rapture will be sudden. It means as I'm doing this broadcast now. There is the possibility that the rapture can take place. And you are watching me suddenly feel that I have disappeared from the screen. If you are still there, I weep for you because it will be horrible. The Bible called that season the great tribulation. The Bible did not call it tribulation. No, it called it the great tribulation. It means the tribulation will be a great one. And the Bible said, <coughs> he, he said, I wish you are not pregnant at that time. When this evil will happen, read for me the scripture. He said, if, if you are pregnant at that time, Matthew chapter 24, verse 19. Uh -huh. And woe unto them, woe unto them that I will turn. Oh, that I will check that if you are pregnant when the rapture has taken place. <laughs> oh, what a horror. Go ahead. And to them that did suck in those days. If you are blessing me at that time, when the rapture has taken place, you are in trouble. Because the trouble will be so horrible that you wish you didn't have a child. I pray for you, young man. May you not be left behind. The, the, it's called rapture. The event is called rapture. When the body of Christ will be cut off the door. That is the last event. The next thing that must happen now before the world is closed. When the Antichrist will suddenly appear and begin to control the whole world, if you are left behind, you will remember me. But I warn you, may you not be left behind. Then put your house in order. That is a form of peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I will definitely see you again in the same time, same station. And I declare in the name of the Lord, may you not miss the Lord. May God give you the watchfulness. May God give you the readiness to be prepared. For the rapture. And I said, there are two things you need to do to guarantee your rapturability. One of them is living in the constant consciousness of God's presence. Why? Because there are two people that have shown that that practice guarantees their rapture. Two people that were raptured in the Bible before the rapture effect. They kind of a prototype of what will happen. One of them is Enoch. He didn't die, he was not buried. He was raptured to heaven. And this credential shows what you need to do to also be raptured. Genesis 5 verse 24. Here is the scripture. Genesis 5 verse 24. Uh -huh. And he not and walked he, with God. He walked with God. And he was not. He didn't die. For, for God took him. He was raptured. Now you can see he walked with God, living constantly in the consciousness of God's presence. For quality friendliness, for quality fellowship, he was living in intimacy with God. He was always conscious of the presence of the Father. And God said, He took him. Do you want to be taken? 
caught up in Job, being wrapped up and appointed, then you must practice how to live in the constant consciousness that God is watching you from heaven. He's around you. He dwells in your heart. He's always in your environment. You need to practice the reality of the Zionic climatology. Then your rapture is guaranteed. Other person again, who also was raptured, who never died, who was no better. His name is Elijah. The same creation. He said he's a man that standed before the Lord. It means he was always living in the constant consciousness of God's presence. And how did he go? He was caught up to do an example of what you need to do to be raptured. It means live perpetually. Yeah. The reality of God's presence with you. As you carry God along in your mind, as you use your mind to meditate on the reality of His presence, you will definitely be raptured. And the last one is that you must be prepared. The readiness that it can be now. Hebrews 9 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sin he of was men. Once offered to bear the sin of men. And unto them that look for Him, so that I, all those who are looking for Him in expectation. Shall he appear the second time? He will only appear to those who are expecting him. So, tell God, are you expecting the rapture? You have forgotten that rapture is still there. <laughs> Your pursuit of success has removed the mindset of the rapture. It's an event, the last event for people of God. But you don't miss it. If you miss the first one, no problem. But missing the last one is irreparable. It's irreparable. I pray you won't miss the rapture. But how do you have to you guarantee that? Is that being ready, your readiness, expecting the rapture to take place now, now. So live your life knowing that it can be now. I wish you were. I'll see you again. Please remember, my name is Pastor Samuel O. Usaka, the General Pastor of Believers Ministries Incorporated, President of Sobo, Samuel Usaka Global Outreach. I declare your life will end with a testimony. God bless you.